Hey guys, welcome back to the business of art. Today we're going to go into doing an art show a little bit more, primarily what things do you need to bring to an art show, and that would be whether you're doing a, an art fair or farmer's market or putting on your own art show. Um, so, I made myself a little list. <laughs> um, first things first is business cards or minimally some way to contact you, um, even if it's just slips of paper with your contact info on it, but ideally get some professional business cards printed out. Um, and then you will need, of course, labels for your artwork of some sort. Now, if you are doing a gallery showing, just so you know, they will generally print out the labels and prices and everything for you. You don't have to worry about that. So this is if you're putting on your own art show of some form. I recommend having a name for the painting, putting the medium underneath that, and then putting a price. If you're doing something really low key, like a backyard barbecue kind of thing, then using something like just regular sticky labels and throwing the price on there can be totally fine. So also, you know, think of the setting if it's a little fancier or whatnot. All right, and then I definitely recommend you print out some form of a bio. So, um, you know, just a little bit about your background. And these are both covered in uh, Tips for a Professional Artist video. So I'll put a, a link to that here. Definitely make sure that you check that out. Okay, so some sort of a bio that tells how you got started, your background as an artist, etc. And then probably most importantly, how are you going to accept payments? So I recommend definitely having a card reader. You want to be able to accept a payment in any way, shape, or form, not only cash, okay? There's a square card reader, and then there's the PayPal card reader. And generally, you can get these for free. So whichever you prefer to use, I do everything via PayPal. So I use the PayPal card reader. It's just easier that way at the end of the year when I'm doing all my finances and whatnot, I just export one payment source mainly rather than using Square and PayPal. But I also have the capability of accepting payments from anywhere. So if someone goes, can I Venmo you? Can I Square Cash you? Can I Zelle? You know, there's so many different ways. I always say yes. Yes, send me money in whichever way humanly possible. I'm never going to say no. Um, and one other really important thing to uh, just on a side note about PayPal, if you ever send someone like a PayPal invoice or something, they can check out as a guest. They do not have to have a PayPal account. They can check out as a guest and pay you with their credit card or their bank account. So that's a little side note about PayPal. Um, but definitely have a card reader of some sort. Have additional cash that you can give me people change in case they want to pay you with a $100 bill and it's an $80 painting or, you know, whatnot, have some change. Um, and then you can decide beforehand if you want to accept checks or not. I don't recommend accepting checks unless you know the person. It's just too risky, I think. But that's just me. If you feel comfortable accepting checks, then definitely accept checks. All right, and then another thing which people generally don't think about, and is honestly, I'm not gonna lie, something I usually forget to even think about, is how are they going to take your painting home once they bought it? So I recommend bringing some parchment paper and then bringing some form of bags. I wouldn't recommend something like sloppy, you know, but get some nice bags, maybe some gift bags or clear plastic bags. Uh, just think of how they're going to get it home. Um, and once again, if it's a backyard barbecue, kind of just relaxed, whatever show, you may not need anything. They may be able to just be like, here's the painting, <laughs> you know, see ya, whatnot, okay? And then I'd say probably the last thing, which is also pretty important, is maybe some form of an email list. So that way, whether they buy a painting from you or not, you have a way to contact them in the future. So that can even just be a piece of paper where it just says name and email, you know what I mean? Or something, or you can print out something a little fancier, but some form of an email sign-up list. 
All right, and then one other important note, though I cannot give you legal advice or whatnot, if you are doing a street fair or something like that, they very often will require some form of insurance, uh, such as liability insurance in case like your painting falls down and hits someone in the head or something, you know. Um, they will generally give you a list of the things you'll need for that, so keep that in mind. Um, and then, of course, there's kind of the basics of you will often need a tent of some sort and grid walls. I personally made my own grid walls years ago. I think it was about six years ago. I had, it cost me maybe a hundred, a hundred dollars in materials. So I'll show you a little clip of that here real quick. So I had my dad make those for me and they've lasted over six years and they work great. There's also metal ones that you can get, uh, but you'll need some way to hang your art. So I recommend grid walls. You can either make your own with wood or of course purchase the metal ones or something like that. Uh, and then if, <laughs> sorry, there's kind of a list of things and I recommend actually making a checklist for yourself so you don't forget anything. Okay, the last thing would be electricity. Are you gonna need lights? Is your fair or show going into the night? So if so, you'll need lights of some sort and extension cords. And of course, a power source. <laughs> you know, so with street fairs and whatnot, you gotta make sure you ask those questions of is there gonna be electricity? You know, is there gonna be, or whatnot, or you'll have to figure out another solution of, you know, battery powered lights, etc. Obviously, if you're doing an art show at home, you don't necessarily have those concerns. So that's kind of these are additional things that you may need if you're doing an art fair elsewhere. Okay, so I hope those answered all of your questions of the things you might need for an art show. Please do not forget to subscribe. Let me know if you have any other questions down there in the comments, and we'll see you next time.